Hi guys, welcome to the sixth episode of Mountain Bike Rear Suspension Series. The episode of today will be one of the most awesome episodes that I ever produced. In this episode I will show you uh, a free and easy method to do some sh uh, suspension telemetry and data acquisition. Yes, that's right, I'm talking about converting this information into velocity and position uh, data over the time. In this episode I will briefly show you how to perform the method, but I will spend most of the time showing you the results in certain types of bumps and explain you how to interpret these results. So stay there guys because this is really nice and cool. To perform this method you will just need a GoPro camera. In particular, a GoPro that films over 120 uh, frames per second. Since I do not have a GoPro here, I will just use my GoPotato to exemplify how to do this. You need to film your shock or suspension in a per perpendicular way. So if you are filming your suspension, it's really easy. You just need to mount a camera uh, like here to film the suspension or above the down tooth. So you are filming the suspension in a per perpendicular, perpendicular way. To film the shock, it depends on the type of the bike. Uh, in this case, uh, I need to film like in this position, filming in a perpendicular way. With this method, we are filming the fork or the shocks at 120 frames per second. If your GoPro is a top-end GoPro, you, are, you can film this at 240 times per second. So after you capture the movies, you will use uh, open source software, a free software uh, called the Tracker. So this software will uh, track the, the, the suspension movement and will automatically give you the data for the position and velocity of, of the movement. So in this video I will not give you all the details, I will just show you the software tracking the, the suspension movement and in a future video I will give you the full tutorial and all the technical details you have to perform to, to achieve this. So let's see the software tracking a rear shock of a specialized pitch. Okay, so this is the result for the test. Don't worry, I will explain the graph and it's really nice. But I, I just want you to, that you understand that this is the position of the shock, okay, the travel or the displacement of the shock along the time. So when you see this graph, remind you, remember the, the, the shaft position of the shock. So if the line goes up, it means that the shock topped out. Uh, when the line goes down, it means that the shock almost bottomed, bottomed out. Uh, in this position, this stable value, it, it is the sag position, okay? So my weight over, over the bike. Okay, now let's e examine the, the, graph, the graph in detail. So this is the curb test. I already uh, explained you this test in the last episode to, to adjust your rebound uh, speed. Uh, so here it's a flat flat terrain, so there is no shock movement. Okay, the shock is at the suck position. There is no movement. Then the the front wheel touches the ground, and this causes some vibrations on the bike. So you get those tiny little tiny vibrations. That's an artifact of the front wheel touching touching the ground. 
Okay, so after these Dani vibrations, in this position, as you can see, my weight distribution is no longer equilibrated between the rear tire and the front, the front tire. So at this position, my weight distribution goes to the front wheel. So you get maximum traction on the front wheel. You smash the, the tire of the front wheel. And as a consequence, there is less uh, weight load on the rear wheel. And thus the suspension, the rear suspension st starts to, to rise. As you can see here, the front wheel touches the ground, then the suspension start, start, starts to rise due to the um, weight distribution. Now, at this point, the wheel is, is completely in the air, so there is no weight on the rear wheel, and thus the shock fully extends. As you can see here, the shock fully extends and co remains completely extended uh, when the, the wheel is in the air. Okay, now the wheel touches touches the ground and the, it, it's this point here. Okay, now at this point the shock is almost at bottom out. As you can see here, there is a very fast compression of the shock and it almost bottoms out. So this is caused by my weight distribution. My weight completely falls down after the curb, the curb drop. Uh, so it, at this point you have a very very high weight load on the tire so you you get maximum traction as you can see the tire is already deformed so maximum traction at this point and now uh, you have the rebound cycle okay so the shock is completely compressed and it you know it will rebound since this this test was performed with the fastest rebound position it will rebound very fast so the shock rebounded, as you can see here, the shock rebounded, it passes the, the sag position, okay, rebounded almost to top it out, and at this point, the science of rebound was so fast, my weight was completely catapulted in, into the air, and the, the tire almost lifted uh, from the ground, okay, so if, he, if this was on the trail, on a fast drop with a, st a steep landing, you probably get an OTB uh, with this fast position on the rebound. After this point, since the rebound was so fast, it creates an, an oscillation. Now I repeated the same experiment for three different rebound settings. The fastest we already analyzed it. Then we have an uh, average speed uh, rebound damping and the slowest uh, rebound damping. With a good rebound damping you don't get so many oscillations, you get just a tiny os oscillation uh, here. With the critical rebound damping that I showed you in the previous video, you don't get any oscillation. Um, the green line is the slowest one. As you can see, it is so slow that it didn't reach the suck position. So the shock stayed back down and it did not recover, fully recover to the suck position. If you are a big geek, you can also look for the theoretical uh, graphs of rebound damping and determine which is your uh, damping ratio. So this is the damping ratios for these specific curves. Now I will show you the shaft velocity uh, data. Basically, the previous graphs we, we analyzed the position of the shock. Now we are looking for the velocity of the shock. Okay, so the speed uh, that the shock compresses or, or extends. So, as you can see, this is the moment where the wheel touches the ground. And after this moment, you get a very huge spike on on the um, on the compression so you get a peak compression velocity around 20 20 inches per second okay ips inches per second so this is a very uh, high speed compression velocity after the the peak after the peak compression you get into the rebound phase so as you can see you get rebounds 
uh, velocity around uh, 10 IPS, so it, it, it's also a, a high speed uh, rebound velocity. So by changing the, um, the rebound setting on the shock, like I showed you previously, we, we affect usually the peak velocities in the rebound, rebound phase. But I will, I will explain you this velocity data better in another day. Okay guys, I have more data from this test in different types of bumps. But since this video is already 10 minutes long, I don't want to burn your brain synapses. So probably we'll continue this episode in, in, the, next, in the next video. So I hope that you, you like this video and I also want to an, acknowledge you by the positive feedbacks and the comments that we have, you have been made. So thank you guys for that and we'll see you in the next episode. Bye!